Okay, so right now uh, I'm gonna call one of my good friends, Chris. He's a professional photographer in Pittsburgh. And I'm really curious to get his assessment on the photo. He's not really into the paranormal, so I'm really, um, just from a photographer's expert standpoint, I wanna get his, his thoughts on the photo. Hey! Hey, what's happening? Not much. Chilling at a pool party. Chilling at a pool party. Damn. Well, I, I'm on a farm. <laughs> what farm are you on? Uh, you know, just a haunted one. The usual. <laughs> so as an expert in photography, what do you think of the photos that I emailed you? Uh, yeah, I think they're really interesting. Uh, the first photo of the ghost or the apparition, um, just you know in front of that tree and the first thing i thought when i zoomed in and was giving it a look you know like first impression if this would have been um edited uh it's an odd place to put this figure you know um i guess as a photographer i'm thinking of placement in objects you know right. so I, I think it's a very strange place to have composited, you know, if that's what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, because you see the shape of the tree, and then you see what looks like a woman in a white dress. Uh, maybe it looks like she has dark brown hair. Um, you know, maybe some, some of that is the tree. Um, uh, but I, I don't know. Um, looking at this image and adjusting overall uh, levels mm -hmm. of it, um, adjusting exposure, um, bringing up the shadows. Um, there was nothing that I could see, uh, you know, again, I, this is a, this is a low quality image, but there's nothing that I can see that's like, well, this looks like it may have been composited in. Chris, do you think it's possible that this could be paranormal? Yeah, I think um, it, it's definitely interesting. Uh, and it, it's a haunting image, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's haunting in the way that it's subtle. Um, right. And, you know, I, I don't know if I would be comfortable saying like, oh, it looks like it, it could be an apparition or a ghost, um, but I, I would say it's interesting. You know, yeah. I, I would want to find out more. Um, it, it at least compels me. It would compel me to do more research and go to the property. I mean, it does look like a uh, a ghost if that's what they look like. You yeah, know, it's it's eerie. It's super eerie. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I, I have tape over my camera. So you don't know where we are. We're in our first spot and I wanna know if you're picking up on anything here. The very first thing I see is a hewn stone. Uh, I think possibly for like a property divide, it's older, um, not small, uh, sort, sort of middling size, like the big enough to carry, but also big enough to be like something that uh, a workman had to like put together. Uh, I think it is definitely part of like a little retaining wall or something or possibly an old foundation. Uh, it is about the right size for an old foundation stone that would have been sourced nearby. And a lot of like meadow or grass, like, like just a, a space that has grown up around it. Uh, tree line, pretty, far in the far in the distance so like there's an area that has been cleared and is still clear uh, that was probably a place of habitation okay yeah I, I keep seeing um, from behind uh, a man probably I mean maybe mid late 20s strapping like, like, like you know healthy hard worker let's see Okay, I, I've, I've been able to widen the lens a little bit, so like, 
I'm still behind him. He's still bent over. He's working. He's not alone. I think I see a woman in the distance. She's got like a little funny little hat thing going. Um, long dress. And again, because I know like Amish and Pennsylvania Dutch people are a thing, I, I can't use the clothes to definitively date them to 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, or 20, 20th century, late 21st century, because this is a style of clothing that has been used throughout all of those. Uh, What's the woman's deal? In my perception, she's moving very slowly uh, at a distance. So the way that I see it, there, there's like a little decline where he's at so there's like a, like a little little bit of a ridge not not very tall um but but enough to like have her a little higher than he is and so like there's this little hillock it's clear and clear it has been cleared uh for a long time so you know the grass is tamped down like there's uh people have moved back and forth it's not pavement it's not uh you know dirt road it's not a field though either it's not like the tall grasses um, and she's just sort of almost drifting. Uh, she's moving slow enough, like, like that slow, thoughtful, head slightly down, hands in front of her holding something. Uh, she's a white woman. I can't see much of her hair around the thing that she's wearing over it, just little fringe. Uh, I can't tell if it's curly or just like sweaty uh, and has curled a little bit because of humidity. Something about her feels sad to me for some reason. And I don't, I, I think it's just the, the position I see her in. Um, certainly she is thinking very hard about something and seems like it is a weight, a weight on her mind. He's in shade. I think that's important. She is in full sunlight. There's no shade around her. So he might be working um, with like a barn or some other building near him. It would be on his left side. Do you know why she would still be here? Let me see if I can get a little more from her. Because there's emotion. She's, she's lost something. Uh, and she's also conflicted about a choice. Uh, she feels like this choice would impact the rest of her life. Just on the depth of emotion, I'm leaning more toward she is uh, an intelligent being who has some tie to this space. Uh, she feels like she is at a crossroads in her life. And if I had to guess, I would say that the, the entanglement of this moment, and this decision, and this loss are why she still has a connection to this place. I think she's afraid she made a mistake. But I'm not sure if that's a mistake that she made in ultimately making this decision or a mistake that she made that led to the sense of loss that she is experiencing as she just sort of perambulates this space. I'm gonna, I'm moving around. I'm gonna yeah. take you into a new space, but um, again, like we can totally come back to this woman too if you keep yeah, picking I, up on her. While you move, I'm gonna do a quick little, try to try to get her down. Okay. So you're going to sketch her? Yeah, I'm going to. Okay, that'd be perfect. It is not the best, but it gives a sense of like what she looks like. I will get a better image of it here. It is very pale. Uh, if somebody were to experience her, how would they experience her or why would they experience her? If she were to be a full body apparition or even a partial body apparition, I think her clothing would come across as very filmy and white, even though there, there is color there. It's just 
a, a very light cloth. Um, so let me say, I think it's possible that she's been a white lady apparition for a small number of people. Uh, the sense of someone or something moving uh, in, a, in a set track. But what strikes me as strongest with her is the emotion and the sort of sense of loss and, and gentle reverie around it. I don't want to say women are more likely to see her because it's, it's not that simple. Um, people who are in a similar emotional situation or who are uh, empathetic toward a loss and that sort of aching, troubled thought of, is this a mistake? Like people who are at a similar juncture in their lives or have faced a similar juncture in their lives may be more sensitive to her appearance uh, because there's like a little emotional pathway between them. Are you picking up on what kind of loss it could have been or what the loss she thinks she might be going through or what the decision is? Well, so I don't know if this is me making a conclusion that is a very reasonable conclusion, uh, but it feels like it might be around a child, um, a very young one, either a miscarriage uh, or a baby who's lost in uh, infancy or a decision to leave a child behind or give a child away. Like there is, there's a profound entanglement of her as a young woman uh, with something she has to let go that she cares for or could care for dearly. And I think I keep seeing her walking as slowly as I do because it's in her head she's still walking away from something. Family plays some role in that. If I had to boil it down as bare bones as possible without assumptions, it's personal. It has something to do with family or familial love. And there's other losses that can or will come from a decision to, to let this go, whether it is by her choice or by circumstance. Okay, Michelle, so we're in a new space. Yep. What did you lose, lady? Did you... I don't think it's romantic. <sighs> Something she cared about, that's for sure. There's an expectation that somehow you might be able to fix it. Uh, and, and I want to caution you, you whatever, whatever, I'm going to say she, whatever she's upset about, it's, it's in the past. She can't, she can't get it back. It's, it's not coming back. Uh, whatever she lost, whatever choice she made, uh, don't, don't promise things you can't deliver on because I think that's the only circumstance under which she might get violent is if you, you frustrate that shred of hope. Somehow I think hope is what's keeping her here in a, in, a, in a terrible, terrible way that like somehow it could go back to the way it was or that it could, all could be better or that she could see this, that, that somehow she could have it again, uh, whatever this, this thing is. Um, and I think empty promises are the most dangerous thing for her. Um, so where I'm standing right now, three of us believe we had an experience earlier today. Mm -hmm. Are you able to tap into that to see if it was anything or anyone? Immediate image of a filmy figure hovering above the ground, the floor, just on the edge, observing um, an almost you know how in the horror movies now they'll do like voices that are like out of joint where it's like, what? And, yeah. and like they play with how it's, they, they try to recreate what it would sound like trying to speak across 
whatever separates us living in the dead. The sense is there is a figure, presumably formerly human, first observing you, initially a little, I don't want to say scared, but uncertain of you, and then attempting to make their presence known. But if any of that fits with an earlier experience, my sense is like what, what feels to me imprinted on this space was there was an intelligent spirit attempting to communicate with you through significant effort after observing you for a period of time and initially being uncertain if you were people that could be trusted. Hey, Michelle, can you hold on for one option. second? Sorry, hold Sorry. on for one second. Hey. What's going on? I just felt something grab my leg. You just felt something grab your leg? Mm -hmm. What did it feel like? Like a pinch like, or? Like it, like, just like that. Really? Not like that hard, but like I felt my pants move. Whoa. Okay. Hey, Michelle? Yeah. Okay, so we just had someone on our team feel like they got grabbed as you were talking. Okay. Do you, if you're able to tap into that, is that the same person you're tapping into or is that something different? I think it may well be because there, as I was trying to like, there was a sense of being looked at as I was looking. Um, so that, that flitting presence is still there and is still trying to like interact. Okay, got it. Um, I'm gonna move into a new space, okay? Yeah. Okay, Michelle, I'm kind of in the new space. Um, the, there, it's kind of connect, it's hard to explain, but um, I might kind of move around in it. You know what I mean? Okay. But yeah. so whatever you're picking up on, just say it. The space seems darker somehow. Uh, and yeah, there is um, a hallway, an open space, like a couple of hallways. Uh, I keep seeing arched. Where you are standing, it feels like where you are right now is not quite as well lit, but is serviceably well lit. But there is a hallway um, and a, a, a curving opening, but it, it's not a frame, it's not a door. Uh, that leads towards something that has a lot more shadow. I can't tell if it's just literally there isn't physically light there uh, or there's less light. There's certainly no, like, not as many windows or they are covered. Like, the space is physically darker, but it also has a... It just, it looks darker somehow and I can't see the, to the end of it I, I assume it's a hallway the color of the walls is almost like a stucco yellow like that like it, I can't tell if that's because of the I don't know if it's literally stucco but you know you know that color um that's like a darker yellow just little shade of maybe orange or tan. If there is activity here, I would expect it to be things that are in transit to go from one one location to another. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go to a different location. Yeah. Okay, Michelle, so I'm in a new space right now. If you're picking up on anything in here. I see a man, and first I see him as a younger man. Uh, you know, as everybody starts out before they get old. Uh, but in this case, as a younger man, there's uh, a, a roughness in his clothes. I wouldn't say abject poverty, but he is somebody who has to work for a living to support himself. Something happens. Uh, it doesn't feel like it is solely through his own work that he has a change of circumstance because the clothing gets finer um, and there's a point where it's sort of a startling change from, you know, homespun whatever to 
a beaver hat uh, to, to like th- signs somewhat ostentatious shows of wealth. There's facial hair now, like very carefully waxed and very carefully maintained. Like like there's a there's an awareness of his appearance being part of his his business, her, his persona, the way in which he is able to inhabit the circles and hold the sway that he has, one, achieved, and two, wants to continue to achieve. All right, so I'm going to ask some really specific questions of you. Um, okay. There's a couple things going on here, according to the people who are here. This house is... You were correct, it's very disjointed. It's, I'll send you a picture when we got off the phone, um, but it was built in sections. So there's a 1700 section, there's an 1800 section, there's a 1900 section. There's a barn where part of it fell down. There were craftsman houses that have since been torn down. There was a suicide associated with this house. It was uh, like the property next door. It was of a young woman. Um, there was, you know, it's a wealthy place. Um, spiritually, people have seen a man with a hat. Okay. <laughs> people, yeah. People. Yay! Hey, for once, I'm actually hearing it. For the, I know. Like. I'm telling you because I, there's some confusing things here that we're trying to figure out. Um, spiritually, people have seen an older woman looking out the window at people, um, but also people have seen a younger woman and they actually have a photograph of her. And from what we can tell, it's pretty legit. Yeah. And it's very much in the same description that you you have picked up on. Um, so, and you know, experiences run the gamut of hearing your name called, voices. Uh, people feel very strange in places. Um, um, and then the other piece of information I'll give you, because it almost kind of seemed like maybe you were going that way. There is a lot of stone on this property. It's like a stone wall, and it's made out of quartz. Okay. So that was a lot of information I just gave you in one, <laughs> like a couple breaths, but... But, but, but ticked a lot of the boxes yeah. of, of what we just did. So, yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if the, if the young woman the loss, like, like something she lost and, and then, and it, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me if she was a suicide. And then if you, we're going to go into our night investigation. If you have any other information that pops through for you, will you text me? Yeah, I'm dating my little things. I will send you pictures, have a great investigation. And uh, if anything else comes through, I will, I will be sure to like, let you know. Oh, Miss Bryn. Hello. Hello. Um, so I got off the phone with my friend who's the psychic. And uh, she, so how she works, she's in Ohio. We don't tell her anything. She kind of picks up on things and she'll sketch things out sometimes. Mm-hmm. So she did very strongly pick up on a woman and she strongly picked up on a man. She drew both of them. I want to see if this looks similar to what you saw. This is the man. Yes. That's it? Hat and all. That's the guy you saw in the barn? Yeah. Is that the one you told me about? Yeah. Is the coat the same on that too? Side? Yeah. Wow. Really? Let me see, because yep. she told me about it. I couldn't explain like That's the exactly and how she explained it to me. Really? Like, yes. Oh, oh, I swear to God. That's weird. And does that say mm. chunky? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was he chunky to you? Yes. Really? Was, yeah. Almost like stubby mm. is what I would say. Yes, she said stout. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, so I she... I don't want to say fat, but right. like, you know... Like a kind of b- bigger build yeah. of a man. Yeah, she very... Wow. He's. She said he's very... But like on the shorter side, but like... Yes. Wide. Um, this is the other photo she drew. This is uh, the woman she felt is here. That is so weird. A- and she also it's said that. in a white dress. This... And is that the one down there? Either down there or even in that side. The whole white dress. See, I thought she was messing with me. Did you really? Yes, because that night I heard the cats. Remember I said something to you? And she yes. always gives me one of these. 
<laughs> and I figured she's making fun of me. Yeah. That's because she had experienced something but didn't want to tell me. Yeah. Until daylight. I'm here. <laughs> until yeah. daylight. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, is it, well, you. You, you said your grandfather used to be here, right? Mm -hmm. So your dad? Yeah. Did he ever experience yes. anything? <laughs> mm, what happened to him? I don't know everything, but I used to bring hot chocolate down to him. He'd be sitting on that damn bench, which used to be over further. And the one time, the lady who had the barn with him had young kids. And I came down one morning, he's drinking his hot chocolate. I hear all oh, this up here. I was like, what the hell are they doing? He said, who? I said, Linda and them. She goes, he goes, mm, they're not here. I said, well, what's up there? He said, there are things here that were here long before me. I don't bother them and they don't bother me. And that was the end. I said nothing more. And have you, what have you experienced since you've lived here? It's at night, I used to turn my TV off. I'd put it on sleep, but not all the time on a night like this. You'll hear humming. It's not my refrigerator because it goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then that's yeah. it. So I turn my thing on mute and I listen and listen and I hear it again. So I keep it on all night. Zach. What's up? What do you got going on over here? Um, so right now I have a sensor in pretty much all the areas that um, had our hotspots. Um, so there's 10 total sensors. Um, they, they detect a, a bunch of different stuff like uh, uh, motion, um, temperature, humidity, uh, luminance. So we should have that whole um, spectrum uh, collected. I have a uh, one of my multi sensors all the way up on the top floor where Britain was kind of having like a um, I don't know, like an uneasy feeling. She didn't really want to go in that room, so we should get all those data points for there. Um, I have my thermal cameras uh, where that photo was taken. I have mm -hmm. a thermal camera set oh, up, nice. and oh, I have yeah. uh, static cameras. So we have you know image of that all night long. See so if anything you know, an animal or something gets in the way, we'll know you know what that is. Um, and then I have a myriad of other sensors um, throughout. So. Um, pretty much the whole place is connected as far as, as um, getting data. As we keep hearing, these experiences have happened as far as we know, dating back to the 70s. Um, okay. So we interviewed this guy named Bill today and he was a caretaker here in the 70s. He's had experiences. And then Bryn's grandfather used to come here in the 70s oh, wow. and he had experiences. And he told Bryn's mother, he's like, the things that are here are older than me. They've been here longer than I have. Wow. So, and he wanted to expand on that. So we're not sure if that was just like his take or if he has heard other things, but it seems like this is a decades long haunting. Like my conclusion so far is that there's something very strange going on on this property. Like there's something that can't be explained. Yeah. You have that many people over that many years having the same experiences and they don't know about it from each other until they talk yeah. to each other about it. And just, I think what we've experienced so far today between Michelle's reading, what your friend said, mm -hmm. what we all experienced in the hallway when we were walking through, there's just something going on. So now it's, you know, let's put it into practice for the night investigation, see if we can get anything more objective. Maybe we should start out together. What if we do just like a, almost like a walkthrough type thing? With together, maybe mm -hmm. just have like a, a handheld device or some something. Just you know, maybe whether we feel it out, just to see how yeah. the energy is at this exact time, and then kind of go from there. Okay, so yeah, why don't we do this? We'll start in that hallway on the older side of the house where everything happened today, and then we can start to split off. Yeah. And equipment. I think you're right on the money with the static. We have a bunch of your stuff. We have the Tesla coil. Um, we have REM pods. We have static pods. We have EVPs. ITC, we have a lot of things to play with. So I think let's grab some equipment. We'll head on over to the older part in that hallway and we'll start there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, it's. I just got like a pain in my chest. What was that? Just got a pain in my chest coming over here. When did the pain in your chest start? Uh, right when we walked through the threshold. Okay. Okay, heading up to the second floor of the original house, to the hallway where everybody has had things happen to them today. We have Zach, Heather, me, and Jay, who Jay is filming us. But Jay also had his leg grabbed and 
something with his arm, felt like something breathed on him. Let me, um, I'll set up the Tesla coil in here. So we're working with a really tight space right here. Yeah. So it's like me and Heather. Zach is down this way. And then Jay is right here. And we have a couple pieces of equipment. Um, God, it's weird up here. Okay, I'm gonna set this up in the hallway. It will um, detect static electricity. So if there's high levels of it, it'll light up. Maybe I'll put it in like the middle of the hallway. Okay. I kinda wanna see if I feel that again. Cause it was right here. I wouldn't wanna be up here alone either. It's a, it's a weird vibe up here. And I do just wanna acknowledge that there's like there's probably mold, <laughs> there's definitely debris. And I think too, like, you know, obviously the higher we go, the more humid it is. And that's yeah. probably could explain the lightheadedness. Yeah, totally. And the feeling of like, feeling like your chest is tight and stuffy. Yeah. Oh. The static sensor. The static sensor red. just turned red. <clears throat> oh. Uh, so, I, I, from what I understand, that was weird. From, from when, I, when I used this prior, I mean, the only time I ever used it was actually in Pennhurst. Um, and uh, I don't know if there's a time or something built in, but it seems like, I don't know if it's the, the intensity of the static um, energy that it picks up, it, um, it goes around. Like pretty much the, the lights go around in a circle. So, so far three lights. Left. Three lights went off, but they weren't even in, like in segments. So I don't know, maybe it's even direction. So it's sensing some static. Yeah. Which, I, again, I don't know if, and it just goes off. I don't know if that's like intensity and just goes around or it's direction. Um, I'd have to do, I, I mean, I'm skeptical of how that actually works, but yeah. I know it's supposed to be based off of static. Um, if, I, if I envision us running into a static issue, I would have just made a little device that I know how it works real quick. It is like stuffy up here. Like I feel tightness in my chest, but I think it it's is. just well, the layout, the airflow. I think it's just natural. We're back. We're back. They're back. We're back. Okay. Um, hello. I'm Katrina. I'm Heather. I'm Zach. We're here because we feel like maybe somebody was trying to talk to us earlier and we don't know who you are, but we would like to. There's some things we have that are lit up. They make kind of pretty lights. Would you be able to interact with one of them? Maybe touch one of them? It's really quiet. Yeah. Like I thought we'd maybe hear like animals or something. Yeah. What about banging on the door downstairs? We heard you like to do that a lot. Here's something that bizarre. What's that? Uh, my battery for my audio recorder has drained pretty substantially and I just put a fresh one in this before we started this. So how long should that normally last? Like 12 hours. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And that's never happened to you before? Uh, no, not in, I mean, I've done many investigations with this thing and it's never drained that fast. Okay, so maybe we're getting something. Maybe something's it's trying to manifest. It's trying to feed off of it. I mean, earlier with your camera going off. Yeah. That's. Yeah, I mean, like I'm standing in this literally exact same spot yeah. too. Like I was literally right, standing right here. If it, you need to take this power, like take it from this battery, like just take it. If it means you can show yourself or make a noise. Are you able to see us? Do you ever play uh, the knocking game? So I knock and you knock back or you make the same sound back. So even if it's a bang or closing the door. Can 
Can you do that? Make two loud sounds. People say they've seen the figure of a woman standing outside one of the windows here. Is that you? If you could change anything from the past, what would you change? Yeah, I heard that. Okay. What was that? I don't. That wasn't me. That nope. Wasn't me. I heard it. Is that upstairs? It was very clear. Hello. If you could change anything from your past, what is it that you would change? Can we talk to the woman here? Our friend told us you're really, really sad and that there's something weighing on you. It's a really heavy decision you have to make. What decision do you have to make? Can you tell us why you're so sad? Can you tell me something about your life that you do remember? What did you do with your days? It's so quiet. It is very quiet. I almost feel like it's like, what's weird is I feel like we've had moments though where I feel the tension. Like it almost pops in for a second. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my gosh, something's gonna happen. I feel the air shift. And then it releases. I don't know, I feel like, Jay, I feel like, out of all of us, you've, you've been the one that had the most. Jay in the spooky yeah. place alone. <laughs> do that first thing, huh? <laughs> Your initiation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do have initiations. Oh, here. boy. Just letting you know. I'm cool with that if you guys want to do that. So here's the thing. Okay, we have, we kind of have three main spots. But, um, you know, if we're going based off of Michelle's reading and she's saying, look, it might not feel comfortable with every single person together, then it might be better to break off. And it's also, we have so much ground to cover. Yeah. Okay, I think this is what we should do. Pair you two up, you two guys together. Okay. Heather and I will do solos. We can rotate through. I think maybe at the end of the night, come back together. Yeah. And then we can bring Bren in at that point. I feel like there's something that's causing me to feel like, a, like an electric sensation throughout my body. It is f***ing terrifying here with the lights off. Did you hear that? The f Dude. That's that f***ing said Bryn. That was f***ing crazy. That was insane.